Hey dudes, it's P-Dubs, and on today's episode, we're going to look at the At Games Legends Bit LCD Marquee. We're going to go over the installation process, as well as my overall thoughts on this product, and if it was worth the money that I spent on it, is this the ultimate update for your At Games Legends Ultimate Arcade Machines? Let's find out. It's a very long and it's a very heavy box, and once you pop it open and uh, remove the first cardboard and you see some styrofoam padding, you'll be greeted with your instruction booklet. Make sure you don't lose this, but we'll go over everything included. Several wires are included in here, including a USB hub, which is really nice because we're going to connect this on the inside of the cabinet to hide all of our wires and power this thing from internally inside the cabinet. Here's the USB cable that's going to go into that hub and into the marquee. And then we have a nice little power splitter here, and you could actually use this on the inside of the cabinet or on the outside of the cabinet to power the device. And of course, here's the power cable to power the marquee. Now, here is the marquee itself, and it does have some protective film on the front of the marquee. I am not going to peel that yet. I would recommend not peeling that until you actually have this mounted on the cabinet, just in case you accidentally drop it or scrape it or if anything touches it during the installation process. You'll notice that you do have multiple screw holes here. It only takes three screws to mount, and you can mount this thing on either an Ekim's Legends 1.0 or 1.1 cabinets. There's two open squares in the middle of the device. One of them has your HDMI ports and your power ports, and the other square there in the center is a, another USB port in order for you to plug in a USB drive. You do need to bring your own USB drive and plug it into that middle section. Okay, let's go over the installation process, and again, we're installing this on an At Games Legends Ultimate 1.1 cabinet. Step number one is going to be to remove the back panel from the cabinet. There's six screws that hold it in, plus you'll have that power cable or possibly even an Ethernet cable plugged in. Make sure all of that's unplugged and remove your screws. But don't move too quick on removing the panel. Remember, there's some internal wires plugged into the opposite side of where you see the power cable port as well as the Ethernet cable port. There's two power cables as well as an Ethernet cable plugged into the opposite side of the kick panel or, or back panel. Make sure you unplug those and then you'll be able to freely remove the back panel. You'll notice right here is the power cables and stuff from my BitPixel LED marquee. I'm going to get all this removed and out of here. Step number two is going to be removing your existing marquee. If, like me, you're upgrading from a BitPixel LED marquee, all you have to do is lift it off of the screws that were holding it in place. We're going to use those same exact screws to mount the new bit LCD, so less work for us. If you don't have an LED marquee, if you just have a standard acrylic marquee, you will have to remove it, unscrew it, and take it off of there to get on to the next step. Step number three is prepping our bit LCD marquee for installation. So in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and find the power cable and the power cable port. Power cable that came with the bit LCD marquee, we're going to plug it into its port. And then we're also going to find our USB cable that came with the unit in the box, that super long USB cable, and we're going to plug that into the USB port that is adjacent to this power cable in that same middle square on the bit LCD marquee. Now, don't forget, at this point, you're also going to want to install a separate USB flash drive, and I'll have an arrow pop up on the screen in just a second here. You're going to install a separate USB flash drive in that first open square area in the USB port. Make sure that USB flash drive is formatted FAT32. That is going to be used to download uh, all the software onto the unit. Okay, step number four, we're going to mount our bit LCD marquee on our At Games Legends Ultimate. We had a bit pixel LED on here, and we used those three screws to mount it. We're going to use those same exact screws to mount the bit LCD, two in the top corner, one in the center middle. You run your cables through that are hanging off your bit LCD marquee, run those through the back of the cabinet, and then just mount it onto the screws. If for some reason it looks like this, where it's sticking up or it's jutting out, well, that means you don't have it on the screws properly. Take it off, try again, and it should look like this. It should be pretty flush with the cabinet. If it looks like this, you know you have it on all three screws correctly. And at this point, you could go ahead and peel off all of that um, protective film covering that's on the marquee. No reason to have that on there. We're not at risk anymore of uh, scratching or damaging this in any way, shape, or form. Okay, time for step number five. We're going to install the USB hub that came with the bit LCD marquee inside the rear of the cabinet. What's great about this setup versus the LED marquee is that everything is going to be hidden inside the cabinet. There's a USB cable sticking out of the PCB board. You saw me unplug it. 
We're going to take this USB hub and we're going to go ahead and plug that into the PCB board into that port. And you'll see right here that USB cable is the cable that goes to your control panel. We want to make sure our control panel joysticks and buttons work. So we're going to plug that into the hub. Then you'll notice we have these long wires dangling down. Well, those are coming out of the bit LCD. We plugged those in when we were prepping the bit LCD. We're going to take the USB cable and we're going to plug it into the hub as well. And boom, you're done installing the hub. Since we're getting ready to connect our power cables and also put the back of the cabinet on, this is your last chance to connect a USB flash drive. You have to bring your own into that USB port. So don't forget, once you hit this step, you're going to have to open up the whole back of the cabinet again to get that USB plugged in. That USB is going to save all the artwork files and stuff you'll download, which I'll show you how to do. And make sure that that's formatted FAT32. Step number six is installing the power splitter that came with your bit LCD marquee, as well as all of your power cables. What's really nice about this setup is you can get everything hidden on the inside of the cabinet. So on the inside of the rear panel, you can go ahead and connect the power splitter plus the two cables that came with your arcade cabinet that were already there that you removed from this little device. You're going to plug those in and then, of course, in the extra port, plug in your bit LCD marquee cable, the one that's uh, the only power cable you should have left dangling down in the back of the cabinet. If for some reason your stuff doesn't power on correctly, you could always flip-flop the locations of the wires and it should power on. When you first power on your arcade machine, it should at least say bit LCD uh, on your display and it should display that until we get everything else up and running. But just so you know, there's always more than one way to skin a cat. And as you can see here, you could plug the power splitter onto the back of the cabinet. That way you have just the cable coming out of the back of the cabinet as well as the power cable from the AC adapter going into the wall. You could set it up this way as well. Just remember if you push your cabinet up against the wall, you could end up damaging uh, this port of the cabinet. So better to do it on the inside. Now you can go ahead and power on your cabinet. The marquee should come on. It should say bit LCD. The monitor should come on. Your control panel is not gonna work because it's gonna think it's in Bluetooth mode, which is what those blue flashing lights are. Hold down the player two button for five seconds. It'll take it off Bluetooth mode so your controls will work. A fix is coming soon for this via firmware update. And again, when you power on the cabinet, the bit LCD should load into the static Legends bit LCD image. If it doesn't do this, if it's black, if it's blank, well, that means that the power cables are not connected correctly on the back of the cabinet. Fix your cables and try again. Okay, time for the fun part, and that is the software section. And the following steps must be done in this order, or you risk damaging or breaking your bit LCD marquee. Make sure you follow these next steps carefully. On your cabinet, navigate over to the settings and check your firmware. There's a firmware 5.67. You want to be on that firmware. I'm already on that firmware. If you haven't updated to it, this unit or this device will not work unless you're on firmware 5.66 or higher. So make sure you update your firmware. After your firmware is updated, make sure your flash drive is plugged into the front of the machine that's got your flash drive X stuff on it, which had your Pixelcade marquees, had your add-on pinball games, game packs, etc., coin ops, your flash drive X needs to be plugged in at this point. Okay, step number nine, we're gonna install the bit LCD software application onto our flash drive X. All you have to do is navigate over to the App Store X at the top menu, and then you'll find the bit Legends Bit LCD X application tile. Click on the A button, and you can go ahead and read through all this stuff. Got some cool features on here for you to be aware of, such as the ability to set it up where this thing automatically powers on and off with your arcade machine, which is really nice. Uh, that's a nice little feature. Uh, as well as, uh, keep in mind, what's happening here is this application is going to get installed onto that flash drive on the front of the unit. The flash drive that you plugged in that's on the back of the marquee before you closed up the back of the cabinet, that flash drive is just going to be used for artwork storage but the actual software needs to be installed onto your flash drive X. Click on the A button. It'll make sure that your flash drive X has enough space. And if it does, just select the option that says install, hit the A button and let it install. This application will take a couple of minutes to install. When it finishes installing, do not launch the application. Click on the close button. Do not launch the application yet. There's still some more work we have to do here to get your bit LCD set up and to avoid it being uh, crashing. You'll notice after it installed the app, if you kind of take a look at the marquee, it no longer has that fancy marquee, it just says bit LCD. 
So we got to update the marquee firmware as well as download all the artwork assets. That's why you're going to close the application. You're not going to launch it. You're going to make sure it looks like this. You're going to click on it again uh, and it'll say, well, what do you want to do now? Now that it's been installed, you want to head on over to the right, the very far right where it says update bit LCD. You want to head way over to the right there and click on update bit LCD. And you'll notice you'll get a couple of options when you do this. It's going to say, do you want to update the firmware or do you want to update the resources? What we want to do here is we want to, and you have to do it in this order. Don't screw this part up. We want to update the bit LCD firmware first. This will take about five to 10 minutes to happen. So just let it happen. You'll notice on the right hand side, it'll give you a percentage and it's very slow. Go have a beer, a cigarette, bathroom break, come back when it hits 100% and it finishes updating the firmware. Once it finishes updating the bit LCD firmware, it's gonna tell you, please wait for the bit LCD marquee to reboot. So it's gonna reboot itself and it will take about two minutes for it to reboot. Don't panic or freak out while you're staring at the black screen waiting for it to pop on. But it will pop on and when it does, woo, breathe a sigh of relief. We can move on to the next step. You can hit the B button here. You'll also notice that with the firmware update that just happened, the Legends Bit LCD marquee is no longer static. Now it's an animated active marquee, so you know you're uh, on the right path. We're almost completed, just one more step to go. Now you can click on that Bit LCD application tile again, hit the A button again, again, head over to Update Bit LCD, and now that, f that tile or that option on the far right to update the bit LCD resources, you're gonna go ahead and click on that. What's gonna happen here, it's gonna connect to the at game server and it's gonna download all of the artwork and it's gonna store it on that USB that you have plugged into the back of the marquee. So all the uh, officially licensed marquees, etc., that at games is allowed to use will all get downloaded and put on there. So it will take a bit of time for it to go through again a few minutes but once it done once it's done you're done once it finishes updating as you navigate the menus whatever's displayed is going to be uh displayed on the marquee like whatever menu you're under games etc and then when you actually navigate down to the game section you'll see uh the game marquees pop up and as you navigate through each particular game it's important to note that just like the bitpixel led marquee there will be a lot of changes and updates to the artwork that will end up being released you know changes uh fancy animations and marquees uh for uh games that were missing or games that need to be added as well as though there should be updates to uh you know how the menus are displayed instead of it just being a a little white text uh just like the bitpixel led I'm expecting at games to update those and make them look prettier, etc. But you are good to go, my friends. So the Bit LCD marquee retails for $349 off of the at games website. I paid for this one out of my own pocket. I ordered it on that National Owners Day when I think it was on sale for 200 or 250 bucks. In my opinion, it was money well spent because this is super cool. It's definitely a great upgrade versus the LED marquees, and you guys know how much I love the LED versions. I think this is awesome. There's obviously things that need to happen. More marquees should come out for the included games. Uh, marquees that were missing, those will eventually be pushed out to us owners, as well as you have the ability to use this with bringing your own games. Uh, CoinOps X, connecting PCs, there's a lot of functionality here that uh, we'll have to dive into into future videos. I think this is a great addition to the at Games system. Well done, at Games. I'm very impressed and happy with the money I spent on this, and I can't wait to dive into more of all that the Bit LCD will have to offer moving forward. Let me know what you guys think. Hopefully this uh, install video and impressions uh, helped you, and uh, give me your feedback and reactions in the comments section when the video's over. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up, and as always, my dudes, thank you for subscribing.